The Democrats, with all the fraud they have done in this election, the Republicans hiding and not fighting, they are trying to silence your voice. Make no mistake about it, they do not want you to be heard. There is a significant portion of our party that says we should just sit idly by and sit on our hands. They have no backbone! That was 26-year-old North Carolina Republican Congressman Madison Cawthorn riling up the crowd, assembled the ellipse near the White House on the morning of January 6, 2021. Just three and a half hours after what you just heard, the first rioters smashed a window and breached the Capitol. Now, last October, reporter Hunter Walker talked to organizers of the January 6th rally who said Cawthorn was one of the several Republicans in Congress who participated in or had top staffers join conversations about the Ellipse event. Now, a group of North Carolina voters have lodged a complaint with the state election board alleging that Congressman Cawthorn, who is seeking a second term this fall, does not meet the constitutional requirements for a member of the House of Representatives and is therefore ineligible to be a candidate. And it cites the 14th Amendment's disqualification clause, which reads, no person shall be representative in Congress who, having previously taken an oath as a member of Congress to support the Constitution of the United States, shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same. State law requires the Board of Elections to hold a hearing on the candidacy challenge. That has clearly spooked Cawthorn, who yesterday filed a federal suit against the North Carolina Election Board to block the hearing, saying running for office is quintessential First Amendment activity and afforded great protection. Robert Orr is a former associate justice on the North Carolina Supreme Court and a lawyer for the voters challenging Congressman Cawthorn's eligibility, and he joins me now. Mr. Orr, I've, I've followed this case because it's, it's, it's fascinating um, and, and somewhat legally novel, I think at least in the modern era. Uh, sketch out the legal theory behind the claims in your suit. Well, under the 14th Amendment, Section 3, which was put uh, into our Constitution shortly after the Civil War, there is a disqualifier for anyone who does three things. One, they take an oath to support the Constitution of the United States. Secondly, there is an insurrection or rebellion against the constitutional authorities of the country. And three, they engage in or aid and support that insurrection and rebellion. And that is a disqualifier from holding public office uh, in this country. And in North Carolina, we have a candidate challenge statute and a group of voters utilizing that statute have filed a challenge alleging that Madison Cawthorn, who has filed for re-election actually in a different congressional dis district, uh, is disqualified under the 14th Amendment, Section 3. So you've got a, I mean, that's key that you've got a state law that provides the sort of means of redress here, which is that you can use that state law to, to challenge uh, candidates for, for a variety of reasons. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. There are a number of disqualifiers or qualifications in the U.S. Constitution and also in the North Carolina Constitution. And this is a a statute that has been used on a number of occasions to address those kinds of challenges. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting case, right? Because at some level, um, the First Amendment equities on the other side loom large, right? I mean, you don't necessarily want some board saying who can and can't run for office willy-nilly. That's obviously an incredibly po profound uh, power to wield. Um, at the same time, if someone said, you know, I'm 14 years old and I'm running for Congress, you'd you need someone to say, like, well, you, you, you can't do that. <laughs> like, you're, you're, not, you're not qualified. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, there, there has to be a winnowing of anybody and everybody that might want to file for office. But I think the important thing to emphasize here is that this is a disqualification set forth specifically in the United States Constitution yep. to address the kind of situations we saw on January 6th. And granted, it was enacted originally after the Civil War, but what we saw on January 6th and surrounding it, including the activities of Mr. Cawthorn, clearly fall within the purview of this amendment. Well, that's the question, right? You'd have to establish um, that what his activities were constituted engaging in that insurrection and that those activities themselves, speaking on the ellipse, weren't simply just First Amendment protected 
political activity. And the argument that people make about that ellipse rally, right, is that that's distinguishable from the criminal assault on the Capitol from people just expressing their, their, their protected views. Well, what we are finding out, and your prior segment certainly addressed a good portion of it, is it, it's more than just the physical assault on the Capitol. It was, uh, as Mitch McConnell just said, uh, an, uh, an effort to undermine the constitutional, peaceful transfer of power to the newly elected president. And so the, the insurrection just isn't the, the violent assault on the Capitol that took place, but it, it's this broader activity in, in which the constitutional principles that our democracy relies on uh, was subverted by a wide range of people including, as we allege in this challenge, uh, Congressman Madison Cawthorn. And his, his lawyers have filed suit in federal court, raising a number of, of issues, trying to block this challenge. But we're prepared on behalf of the voters we represent, our, our, our entire legal team, to go into federal court, ask to intervene and participate with the uh, attorneys from the attorney general's office representing the state board of election get that case thrown out in federal court and proceed as quickly as possible in proving our case before uh, the panel appointed by the State Board of Elections, uh, which can be reviewed by the State Board and ultimately yeah. the North Carolina courts. Um, Robert, I'd love to have you back at some point in the program to explain how a, 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 an individual spent decades as a very prominent Republican lawyer in the state uh, is now uh, finds himself in this position. So come back again soon, Mr. Ward. Thank you very much. Whenever you invite me, I'll be back. Thanks, Chris. All right.